Hey guys, welcome to the Touchdown Table. I'm Ryan, that's Tyler, that's Jordan. And in this video, we are going to be doing a deep dive into the Denver Broncos. Uh, so, as you know, if you've been watching this channel for a while, deep dives to talk about off-season moves, draft, um, the current roster, and just kind of what we think um, the expectations should be and what we expect uh, for this team going forward. In this case, it's the Broncos. So we're going to talk about the moves they made in the offseason, what their roster and depth chart looks like now, some players that we think could have some big roles, and ultimately how will they fare in 2021. We'll talk about all that. Denver Broncos deep dive. Who wants to get us started? Well, we usually start with the free agency and the draft. So let's just start with the draft now. Jordan, do you have that pulled up? On your, I have it pulled up here, too. I have it pulled up, yeah. All right, you can go ahead and read those off, and we'll talk about the picks, and I'll get the free agency stuff pulled up. Round number one, pick nine overall. They go quarterback. Patrick yes, should have. Sertan Deuces, second. A lot of people thought this one was going to be quarterback. Justin Fields is still on the board. People upset. They didn't take him. They're sticking with Drew Locke, although they also have Teddy Bridgewater, which we'll get into in a second. Um, but quarterback was a need for their team. Um, I can't even remember who I had them getting in my mock draft, but Jalen Phillips, you had yes, Jalen Phillips. I, 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 I think <laughs> this was an okay, okay pick for the uh, the Broncos. If they weren't going to quarterback, this is the area I would have expected them to go if it wasn't Jalen Phillips. Um, so not bad. Yeah, and um, I guess they're putting their faith in the quarterbacks. Yeah, I like it. I didn't want them to take a quarterback. I was adamant about that. Um, and I think Sertan, he was my number two corner. J.C. Horn was my number one corner. He's, he was gone at the time, so I have no problem with the pick. I think it's uh, good for Denver. Uh, like Tyler mentioned, you also could have looked at Ed Rusher with Jalen Phillips or Quiddy Pay or something, but I like the pick. I think this is appropriate value for Sertan. And, um, yeah, sec second best corner in the draft, in my opinion, and they took him, or they made him the second corner taken, so uh, I have no problem with the first-round pick. I like it. Can I go down to the second one? Yeah, round two, pick 35 overall. I could be wrong, but I think they traded up for yes, this one. Yes, you're right. Indeed. And it's Javante Williams running back out of North Carolina, someone that I really like, these yeah. guys really like. Great pick. I think it's good for them. Uh, they still have some running backs right now, but losing some guys, they needed some depth. And Javante Williams is not only a depth per person to me, he's someone that could have a starting role eventually. I really like this kid. And so I think it's a good trade-up for the Broncos. They saw potential in him. I saw it. Smart move by them. Yep. Third, like run, the third running back drafted. Uh, my second favorite running back out of the draft class, I think. My um, third. Yes, third. Um, so I think that was a worthy trade to go up and get him um, and have him alongside Melvin Gordon and now Mike Boone, who they signed in free agency, but, and Royce Freeman. Yes. Yeah, interesting running back group there. I like the trade up. Um, he was my third running back, so about appropriate value. I think that he's an NFL-ready guy. You know, it's not always super flashy with him. He might not be the niftiest guy, but definitely someone who could be a power back and carry the load. I think he's very NFL-ready. It's just the little things in his game that he does, the footwork, the running ability, the the ball security. Uh, you just see um, a lot of NFL-like traits from a running back, and that's obviously what you're looking for in the NFL draft. So I like the trade-up, and I like the pick, and Denver's uh, gone two for two in my book so far. Yeah, well... If we're looking at memes here, they're going three for three, adding someone that's become somewhat of a meme here. Uh, yeah. Now, we're not making fun of him necessarily, but it's just he's been embraced something it. funny. He's, yeah, embraced, he's it. embraced it for sure. If you don't know who I'm talking about, it's Big Belly Boy. And honestly, I can't Quinn pronounce Miners. his last Miners. name. Miners. It's yeah. Quinn Miners, offensive line out of, was it Wisconsin? Wisconsin Whitewater, I think. Whitewater, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is somebody that, uh, as we talked about, there's been pictures, there's actually one on here of, him with the jersey on, and the jersey does not fit over his big stomach, so it's just been the funny thing uh, with him, but not a bad pick. Certainly not off as a line. I'll let you guys go more into this one. Well, I didn't watch Quinn Myers because he went to a smaller school, but I heard a lot of good things about him. Where would you even seems find like tape got... for Wisconsin Whitewater? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I don't know, but it seems like from what I saw from other people, I got good value out of him. So. Right. Yeah, big dude. Um, yeah, D linemen are going to you know just have problems, I think. O-line is a need for Denver. Um, I think they have a lot of nice young pieces on their offense, um, and I think their offense is really on the rise, and I think they're really going to click this year, but we'll get into that more later when we talk about the expectations. But for now, draft continue. Yeah, well, we'll talk about this one more in depth, and then I'll read through the next ones. This is also round three, just like uh, Miners was. It's Baron Browning, inside linebacker out of Ohio State. Uh, Baron Browning was a guy who last year was even more highly sought out. This year still had um, a pretty decent year. Ended up going in the third round. Not a good or not a bad spot for him to go. Um, definitely a lot of potential for him. I'm excited to see what he can do in Denver. Yeah, we'll see. Um, 
when he plays right now, he's listed second on Denver's depth chart here on ESPN. He's listed as the second right inside linebacker. So we'll see um, when he makes a um, impact when he gets on the field. Obviously, with Denver during their Super Bowl run in Super Bowl Fifty, they were more of a defensive team. But I think now they're almost kind of shifting to become more balanced and maybe even more offense heavy. Just when you look at the talent on their team. Uh, but yeah, solid depth pick in the third round, and now just run through the rest. Yeah, Caden Stern, safety. Jamar Johnson, safety. Seth Williams, wide receiver. That's K good. Kerry Vincent, cornerback. Jonathan Cooper, outside linebacker. And Marquise Spencer, defensive end. Yeah, I feel like that Seth Williams one could be pretty good. What was that, sixth round they got him? I mean, like I always say, there's always late-round receivers that end up having huge impacts like they should have been first-round players. So just watch him. See, I don't know how much he'll play, but that could be a sneaky good one. Yeah, you look at the positional groups they drafted with, too. It was pretty spread out. I mean... They got two cornerbacks and two safeties, an outside linebacker and an inside linebacker, linemen are in a running back and a wide receiver. So both sides of the ball, they went around, um, filled the needs that they had. Um, other than quarterback, some people say they still had a need at the quarterback position. We'll get to that in a second. But for now, let's talk about the free agency um, that they had this year. It wasn't very much. They re-signed Justin Simmons to a four-year contract after he was franchise tagged um, last year. So that was good. Can we for pause them. for a second here? Sorry, yes. pause, dude. Yeah, I just, I just saw something that I wanted to share here. It says that uh, Marquise Brown changes number to five. Stop yeah, doing I saw that. that too. Um, from fifteen. To the five. trade from Teddy Bridgewater, which we'll get into in a second. That was the trade, and they signed four people from free agency: Ronald Darby, Mike Boone, Kyle Fuller, and Shamar Steven. Um, Fuller That's and Darby exactly. should make impacts at the cornerback position. Yeah. They should be doing a lot better. We'll see what happens with Teddy Bridgewater. Don't think he's going to be the starter. I think he's just there in case they need him. Yeah, I actually do love the Teddy Bridgewater move. I think that's what Denver needed to do. Don't waste a first-round pick on a quarterback. Just get someone to compete with Drew Locke, hopefully make him better, and have a reliable veteran option that still has uh, some potential um, you know, to compete with, with Locke. And I think that one of those guys will you know, be the answer. I think it'll be Locke, but I still love the Bridgewater trade, only giving up a sixth-round pick. So... You know, not really, you know, if Bridgewater, you know, just completely flops, it's not like you gave up much rather well if you rather than if you draft a quarterback and that doesn't pan out while well, you used a first round pick and you're gonna get memed forever. So I think the Bridgewater move is a subtle move that will actually pay big dividends because even if Bridgewater doesn't have an impact as far as starting, I think just sending the message to Drew Locke that hey, you need to be better than you were in the past two years, uh, to be the franchise quarterback of this team, which which he does, that's fair. Um, I, I think Teddy Bridgewater will only make Drew Locke better, so I like the move. Yeah, I definitely like that, and if you've been watching our channel for somewhat a while, I guess you can say, uh, we did stuff with uh, the, when the rumors were going around with Deshaun Watson possibly going to the Panthers. This is when uh, Teddy Bridgewater was still a Panther. There was like the question of, okay, it looks like they're trying to sell everything to get uh, Deshaun Watson here, and I was like, well, hold on. I don't think they need to do this. I like uh, what I see from Teddy Bridgewater wasn't the greatest season, but it was definitely not the worst season. I think that he's still got a lot left in him. Not sure who's going to win this battle for the quarterback position. That's something they get into maybe a bit later. Uh, however, right now, Drew Locke is number one on the depth chart, by the way. I don't know if Brian said that, but uh, that's going to be... Which makes sense. I mean, yeah. Started last yeah. Year. So it's going to be a fun battle to watch. I think both of them are very worthy, and I think there's a good shot Teddy gets it. There's also a darn good shot that Drew gets it, so it's kind of a toss-up to me. All right, um, let's go to the roster itself now. Just reading off the depth chart, I'll read. Um, we talked about Drew Locke being the, the uh, number one quarterback right now. Teddy Bridgewater currently behind him. Running back Melvin Gordon, we mentioned Devontae Williams um, when talking about the draft. So that's going to be a pretty good duo, don't you guys think? Yeah, I, I, I like it. And then this is where it gets underrated into underrated territory. Last year we saw some injuries with some of these guys, but now hopefully they'll all be doing um, better. Now, so Cortland Sutton, Jerry Duty, and Tim Patrick are listed as the starters right now. They also drafted KJ Hamler from last year. They have Seth Williams, um, Tyree Cleveland. Uh, a good one to mention would be Kendall Hinton. Yeah. Uh, we know him from being the quarterback when they played against the Saints last year. Um, but this wide receiver group, now that they're healthy and um, Judy going to his second year, same with Hamler. I think this they have a chance to be dangerous and not even to mention Noah Fant um, being the tight end. And Albert Okwebunam being the backup also could be used for him. I cannot wait to see this receiving core out there and healthy this season because 
you know, Denver's offense last year, it wasn't great, but they were so freaking young. I, it's going to take time. There's going to be growing pains when you have a young quarterback, young receivers, not to mention injuries, and you're playing in a, a tougher division, playing teams like Kansas City twice. This, These receivers are going to do great things. I think this offense is going to do great things. They were just so darn young last year. It makes sense that they were bad, but they're only going to get more experience. They're only going to get better. They're only going to learn more. And you look at guys like Jerry Judy, he had some drop problems last year, but hey, like let's not forget, you know, this guy was a first round receiver. Guys like Noah Fant, first round tight end. Tim Patrick really came out of nowhere and was doing big things. Obviously, Cortland Sutton, the number one guy, the veteran of this group, but he was drafted in, in what, 2018 maybe? 2017? I don't know. Someone, I'll look that up in a second if someone can, but maybe like it was 2018. Sutton, Sutton, I mean, Sutton's the veteran of this group and he's, you know, you know, only he a, missed a good portion was, of the last year too. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the point stands, this this receiving core and this offense is so darn young. I think we're going to see a huge leap from Drew Locke, from these receivers, from this offense as a whole. Just because when an offense is that young, it's a lot of chemistry building. It's a lot of growing pains, like I said. So I just cannot wait to see Jerry Judy out there, to see KJ Hamler using his speed, probably making some big punt returns as well. We saw flashes of it last year, but I think we're going to see a much more in-sync, consist, consistent wide receiver group and offense in Denver because it just that's just the way it's going to be it, it just it makes sense last year and experience you know getting a lot of the kinks out but now with a more normal um, off season and a nor more normal preseason I am really excited for this Denver offense I think we see a huge step forward from really all phases of their offense yeah Ryan you said it this this offense is young and that could since there's a lot of well-known young people on this team it could lead to a lot of success either next year or certainly in the future, but it also could lead to maybe uh, some busts. I'm not saying they're going to be a bust team. I really don't know what my opinion is on the Broncos right now. I'll have to give a record soon. I don't know what I'm going to say yet. It could be ranged from a huge uh, variety of things just because this team has that much of a question mark on it. Plus, they're in a pretty darn good division too. Uh, but their offense is certainly there. They're young. There's a lot of names that you know. Uh, and Even what, the offensive line saw some. Yeah, the yeah, offensive line. Imagine. Dalton Reisner. Out of Bowie Bobby Massey, Christianberry, Graham Glasgow, Bobby Massey. Yeah, he's been around for um, a bit longer, but still. Yeah, Quinn Miner's also the chapter. Yes. Not currently the starter on the depth chart, but could get some time. Yeah, so just a lot of younger guys in this offense. Potential is there. That'll be a story to watch as the story or as the season, excuse me, rolls on. Let's go to the defense real quick though. And as Ryan said, when they were playing in Super Bowls, of course Peyton Manning was one one of the big guys who was leading this team, but it was also just a lot of that defense, led, led guy guys like Von Miller, who's still on the squad. Uh, actually, I don't know what the situation is with Von Miller right now because he went through that weird thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sure he's probably going to play, but I just haven't heard anything about it recently, so that's something to to watch. Um, but the the cornerback position was something that they addressed over this offseason, which I think was good. They brought in Kyle Fuller, um, Ronald Darby as well, drafted Patrick T Sertan. So I think they're set there. Uh, it's going to be really good for them. Um, safeties are right. Kareem Jackson, Justin Simmons. And then uh, their line is better. Uh, Von Miller is a linebacker, but a lot of times he's he's rushing. Bradley Chubb, same thing with him. Uh, Shelby Harris, Mike uh, Purcell, and Draymond Jones are the names on that defensive line as well. That's something that they are, have been trying to beef up. I think that combination of Bradley Chubb and Von Miller, uh, if they're both able to stay out there, is going to be really dangerous. Uh, yeah, and like I said, uh, just going back to the quarterback position, that was something they needed to address, and they did it pretty well this offseason. To start, I look at the secondary of this team, and last year wasn't very good, and now I think it's kind of dangerous. I mean, going out and signing Ronald Darby, still have Bryce Callahan, Justin Simmons, who they re-signed, Kareem Jackson getting Kyle Fuller and drafting Patrick Sertan, or Pat Sertan, whatever we're calling him now. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's dangerous, and Caden, Caden Stearns they also drafted, who I like uh, Texas, I believe. Yep. Um, so I honestly think that that's what they needed, you know, help, help stop these huge wide receivers that would be going against them, these quick guys that are in that division. And I think they are combating it well with the secondary. I think they still could have addressed the defensive end position a little bit more. Um, so yeah. that would be something that I would point out. But um, well, with the defense they run, though, they their ends are their outside linebackers for the most part. Yeah, I mean, Bradley Chubb's listed as a linebacker. so Same with Von Miller. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I thought maybe like a Jalen Phillips would be a good fit for them. Yeah. But, but I mean, yeah, you mentioned the secondary really, really. Do you think that's another thing? You know, a lot of, you know, some new players like Kyle Fuller, uh, Ronald Darby, obviously the guy they drafted, uh, the guys they drafted, Sertan and Stearns. 
Uh, but I, I, I like the safeties too, Justin Simmons and Simmons, and then Kareem Jackson. I know him well because I'm a Texans fan, if you didn't know. And he was on the Texans as a while. He was actually a corner with us, so he clearly converted to a safety. But still a dangerous secondary with some underrated names. So, yeah, yes, another part of this Denver team that I really am excited to watch and a, t- a part of their team like their offense that I think will be better in, their, in terms of their secondary. I think, um, you know, like Tyler said, a lot of good names and definitely could be dangerous. All right, I'll read off their special teams really quickly. Um, kicker Brandon McManus, punter yeah. Sam Martin, their holder is also Sam Martin. Uh, punt returner and kick returners Deontay Spencer and long snapper Jacob Bob and Moyer. Um, yes, yeah, that was right. McManus is, I think, one of the better kickers in the league just from what I've seen, but obviously, he gets a little help with that. Um, you know, Denver elevation, but still, nonetheless, it's you know, still worth quite and a lot. And the lie. cold weather doesn't help when that comes to yeah, it. that's yeah. true, that's true. Something we forgot to do this video, we usually do the one word descriptions of the. The draft and the free agency. Let's do a one word description of the Broncos team this year. Um, we'll give you guys a second to think. I got mine. Ryan, go ahead. Exciting. All right, Jordan, you had it? Potential. All right, I'm just going to go with Young. So no made up words this time? No made up words. I didn't have time to think of one. Broncos. Um, fantastic. All right, yeah, now, that, now that we have that, um, let's do record predictions and we'll wrap this video up. Jordan, we'll start with you. You were mentioning it earlier. Let's see what you got. Yeah, I decided to go basically towards the middle, gave him one more win than about what's, I mean, you really can't go 500 anymore unless you tie, uh, but 9-8 and eight is my record prediction for them, just because they're in a tough division, but also the potential, like I said, is there. Um, obviously, this is just rough off the top of my head, having to look at their schedule, but I'm high on this team. I think they're going to make the playoffs as a wild card. Give me 10-7. and seven. All right, I'm with Jordan. I'm going to say 9-8 and eight for them. I really think they are an above-average team now, if they can... Keep the team healthy, especially those wide receivers, and Drew Locke can play like a second-round player that they drafted him to be just that even. Um, I think they have a chance to be good and make the playoffs, so it's going to be exciting to see what they're able to do next year. So thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like this video. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell. Go comment down below what you think about the Broncos team this year. Also, let us know what you thought about what we said um, throughout this video. Also, make sure to go check out our podcast in our Instagram um, where we post Stuff about the NFL and college and all that type of stuff. That's all I got to say. So with that, we'll see you guys later. See ya.